morning, Mr. Scudder. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Fay. Yes? I don't mean to be insistent, but when will you be able to take care of your bill? Isn't that funny you should mention that, Mr. Scudder? That is a coincidence. Do you realize that I'm on my way right now to the telegraph office? See, I'm expecting some money today. Yes, that's what you've said every other day for the past three weeks. You see, I've... This is... We found this trunk in your alley. Yeah, it came out of a window. Oh, what do you know? That's my trunk. I wonder how it got in the alley. Oh, I wonder. He wonders. Well, you're a couple of cute little nippers. <laughs> Did you know that that was my trunk? No. No. Well, it is. Now you can take it back to 418. Come on, boys. It's safer down here. Aren't you going to give us something for finding it? That's an idea. That is an idea. You know, someday I'll get a customer with hair. Still around town? Yes, uh, you've got a nice town here. I thought I'd take a little rest. Any wires show up at the theater for me? No, but I think I've got that other little matter settled. Drop around after a while. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Papa, this, this is Frank Fay. Oh, Frank Fay, the stage actor? Say, are you Frank Fay, the stage actor? Yeah. What do you make off like? What do I make off like? Yeah, what do you do on the stage? What does Frank Fay do on the stage? Oh, I'm sorry, I never... Uh, I... It's fantastic. Oh, like Sally Rand. Sally Rand? Yeah, she does it fantastic, too. Oh, now, here yeah, now, there'll be none of that. Do you dance? Yes, but without the fans. Without the fans? Well, are you liable to get arrested? All right, so I do it with Pussy Willows. Oh, Pussy Willows. <laughs> but enough about me. What do you make off like? Oh, I'm just a barber. I, all my customers that come in, I trim them. <laughs> uh, I'll take the works. Is there someone there? Who? Somebody to take my coat. Oh, yeah, I'll take it, Mr. Fay, of course. And my hat. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't bend it anymore, you hand. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, say, you're pretty good. <laughs> Graduated second highest in the barber college. Yeah. Now you tell me, who was first? Oh, fellow the name of Corky Smith. Must have beat you out by a hair. <laughs> yeah. It was a pretty close shave. <laughs> Get it? Close shave. <laughs> Look, before you kill yourself, how much do I owe you? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, let's see. That was 50, 20, 40, and 50. That's a dollar 60. Okay. Do you know? <laughs> I've forgotten my wallet. I've left it right in the hotel. <laughs> you mind cashing a check? No, oh, no, sir. I'd be glad to. Good, thanks. That's the service. I am. Uh, do you know? I left your checkbook in, in the, the hotel. Wallet, wallet at yeah. the hotel. Uh, well, I have a blank check. Good. Make it out for me, will you, please? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You better make it for $10. I'll need a little cash. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
You forgot to sign it. Oh, of course I did. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, all right. All right. Mm -hmm. Take out what I owe you. Uh, that was a dollar sixty, wasn't it? Dollar sixty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you are. There, that's uh, two, three, four, five, five or ten. Thank you very much. This is for you. Oh, thank you. That check's any good. Of course it's good. It's my own check. After the attachment was paid, there was ten dollars and seventy-one cents left. Hmm. And here it is. Thanks. I worked the whole week for the finance company. Mr. Fay, remember me? Oh, yes, the second best barber on the campus. Yes, uh, about this check. Uh, there's been a mistake. You owe me $10. How do you make that out? Well, this is my own check, and I cashed it. Oh, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> How stupid of me. Uh, no, it was stupid of me. All right, have it your way. Well, here's your $10. Thank you. Now we're square. <laughs> Just a minute. I'll take that check, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Is it good? Oh, sure. Anybody in town will cash it. Will you cash it? Why, sure. It's just as good as gold. <laughs> that makes us even, eh? Sure. The other way, I was getting gypped. <laughs> You're still being gypped, kid. Yeah. Well, no, I got two of them now. Oh, that can't be right. No, yeah. No, 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 you keep it. Oh, keep no, it. listen, you confuse me enough. <laughs> All right, I'll take it until you figure it out, and then you come and see me. Until then, I'll accept this as a loan. <laughs> mm. Say, Mr. Fay, mm. uh, would you do me a favor? Certainly. I want to talk something over with you. Uh, would you come over to my house uh, for lunch? My sister Susie's a great cook. Wonderful fried chicken. Uh, just name the day. Well, the day, noon. We're leaving. Yeah. I wonder today, today, begging to watch the sea. chance on the New York stage, Mr. F uh, Frank? Now look, Bill. You got a nice home here? Oh, sure. It's all paid for? Yeah. Nice barber shop? Yes. That paid for too? Right. Got all the food you want to eat? Now why tempt fate? You might go to New York and starve to death. Oh, there's no chance of that. <laughs> I've got enough money to last me several years. And I could always go back to the barber business. Is that so? You know, it's something I've always wanted to do, and well, I've been saving for it. Hmm, well, that makes it different. And you're a pretty lucky guy to run into Faye. You know, all those New York aces and Faye are just like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, would you introduce me to some of them? Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? Hmm. I'm going to buy a ticket to New York City the first thing tomorrow morning. You buy two tickets and I'll go with you.
Tonight he gets a room. With vessels and serfs by my side. Vassals and serfs. You know, stooges. <laughs> oh, yeah. With riches too great to count to bold. Rich is too great to count. Don't worry about that. The government will take care of that. Oh, <laughs> say, you got a pretty good double act there, Frank. Double act? Well, sure, I can book into Patterson with that act. You can? Certainly. Put you to work right away. Start on Monday. Uh, how much? Two fifty. Two fifty. But you see, here's the whole thing. I uh... all right. Make it three hundred. We'll have to talk it over with my partner. Uh, Bill, how about $300? Oh, I, I haven't got that much with me, Frank. No, no, Bill. He wants to pay us $300 a week. He wants to pay us $300 now, a week? Now, Bill, we've got to be fair. This man wants to help us. Yeah, but Frank, I, in the barbershop, I never got... Gotten... Bill, I'll get him to take it. You say we can open Monday? Open Monday. That's a little quick. You know, we just threw this act together, didn't we, Bill? Well, I didn't know a thing it's about... But Bill's a very quick study. Oh, I'd make it a week for money, though. I'll give you plenty of time. Great. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> Shake hands with Mr. Blonde. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, boys. Gee, <laughs> no, Mr. Blonde, Bill. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> you know, I was so surprised. Oh, he's away past his bedtime. <laughs> I right? just got in the car. You know, I mean, Bill. imagine we're going to hear a house. The neighbors will come in and beat us to death. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind applause. <laughs> a funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater today. A small boy approached me and he said, see here, mister. Well, here I'm talking about myself. That isn't really what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I want to do a few card tricks for you. I think they're rather good. Some tricks that I learned playing with strangers on trains. Now, for these experiments, I'm going to ask one or two or three gentlemen to step on the stage by way of a committee. Any gentleman at all, it really doesn't make any difference. Now, there are stairways on either side of the stage. Any gentleman or gentleman that might come up, please. Any gentleman or gentleman that might come up. Can I help? Any gentleman that would care to step on the stage, I would appreciate it so much because in... Yes, I realize that. <clears throat> Take off your hat, please, the ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is an experiment. You're going to assist me. Now, I'm going to ask you to take a card. Any card at all, it really doesn't make any difference. Any card, take it, only don't let me see the card. You look at the card, remember the card, show the card to the ladies and gentlemen. That's the boy. Remember it, now place it back in the deck. Any place at all, and you keep the deck. You see? Now, I'm going to concentrate, and I want you to concentrate. I have to go into a coma. To a coma? I used no, to live... No, this is the thing. I, there's a little yoga in this, too. All you do is concentrate, concentrate. Harikasuntas. Herapun kederentrelat. Ompa, ompa sik. What is that, Crisco? Yeah, I just changed my oil. Just, just concentrate on your car. Now, Rikerson comes to me. It comes to me the car this little chap took was none other than the tin of spades. Thank you. Now, for my it next trick... It was the jack of diamonds. I am going to take... It was the jack of diamonds. Go away, boy. Go away. I'm going to take uh, the same deck of cards. Well, it was the jack of diamonds. They all saw it. That isn't necessary. Just step over here. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the jack, of, jack of diamonds. Yeah. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Anyone else care to take a card? Anyone at all? It really doesn't make any difference. A 
I'm going to get 30 copies of these and airmail them to Susie back home. Mm, get Susie to mail us a pie, too. Ah, the act is swell. It's going over great. It's always great when Faye's around. How are you boys lined up? Any chance of holding you over for another week? Another week? Now, wait, I... could you? Uh, we've got a lot of places, a couple of spots in particular, but the dough isn't right. Well, I might be able to raise the ante uh, a little. You better speak up, because Blondell's phoning us tonight. Well, uh, how about another 25? 25? I... Now, Bill, give this man a chance. He means well. 25? Are you sure you can afford it? 50. That's absolutely tough. What will I see? Will 50 be all right? Bill? Oh, Frank! It's all right. He'll take it. Fine. Oh, say, and the billing. How about it for the holdover? Oh, great. Yeah. But there you go. <laughs> oh, Billy. Help us up to a park on your way out. Hello, Frank. Hello, Bill. Having your lunch already? <laughs> One doesn't have lunch in bed. One has breakfast in bed. Would you care to join me? No. I don't feel like getting all undressed again. Besides, I had my breakfast. Hello, fellas. Hello. Hello, Jack. Well, if it isn't the old flesh peddler. What are you doing up this early? Early? I've done a good day's work already. Serves you right for handling all those small-time acts. You wouldn't have to get up early to sell us. Is that so? <laughs> it just so happens I have been selling us. How would you boys like your own show? Our own show? That's what I said. Who's going to produce it? Anyone you say. Who's dough? Don't worry about that. This guy's got it. He wants to do a sort of hell's a poppin'. He thinks he's right up your alley. Well, what do you say, Frank? Sounds interesting. I'll think it over. And Frank, mm. I got a great title. What? Hell's a poppin'. <laughs> Billy, will you stop? Bad number, is it, Frank? There isn't a bad number in the whole corner. Leave it to Faye to pick them. And lose them. You're not sorry you put your money in the show, are you, Oscar? There's not a bad number in the whole corner. Oh, no. No, I'm, I'm happy about it all. I didn't think it was going to be so much fun. <laughs> idea at all. Here, let me show you again. It's a one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two, three. And then around. Yeah, well, I like my routine best. Well, I don't. I'm running this course. My gosh. Go ahead and run the course. I'm a specialty dancer. I'm gonna do my routines my way or else. Well, I'm the dance director of this thing and you've well, got to something do something my be way. Done. I don't care what you are. I'm gonna do my specialties no, no, my no, way. No, 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 children. Let's not poor. Let's be a happy little family. Now, tell me, what's wrong? Nothing. She's just not doing my routines, that's all. Oscar, darling, I don't have to do it his way, do I? Well, I don't know. Uh, let me see it your way. Sure, it's one and a two, one and a three and a four. And one, two, three, four, and up, 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 up. And I like her turn, especially. Hey, that's marvelous. That's, that's really good. Now, let me see yours. That's enough. I like hers best. Well, that's that. Now, you'll have to get along without me for a while. I'm tired. I won't be long, Oscar. And I'm stopped. Yeah, all right, honey. Just a happy little family. Pardon? You know something? I want to take you over my knee. Maybe I'll enjoy it. From you, Faisy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Frank. I really got something now. No kidding? Oh, I got a knack that's a knockout. You want to handle it. <laughs> this guy, I tell you, he's a fine. Wow. Wheel him in. Oh, no. 
There's a boy going around with his father's head. Well, he's been through a lot. He's got to go through it all over again. Frank, I, I want you to meet my very dear friend, Jose O'Toole. Oh, now, please, Bill, no talking like that, will you please? Don't. No, th that's his name, Jose O'Toole. Look, O'Toole, those are my kind of people, and there are no Jose's among us. Well, there are now. I, uh, that's really his name. All right. Uh, he's... Uh, Mr. O'Toole. Oh, the puss on him. May I tell you that I am delighted and charmed and a bit stagnated at meeting up with you? You should be, cause I sing like you wish you could. Naive little stinker, isn't it? <laughs> O'Toole, go ahead and sing. Oh, he does imitations too. Yeah. Birds and beasts of the forest. No, he, oh no, he, he does imitation of people, oh. uh, of historical people. No, Bill, historical. Oh, remember that, will you? Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, What's his first imitation? General Grant. General Grant. But he has no beard, the man. Uh, well, he doesn't need a beard. See, oh. he gets it all with his voice. General Grant's voice, he does. Yeah. Mm. Who would know around this joint General Grant's voice, Bill? Well, Frank, you should remember. Oh, no, Bill. No, 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 no Billy. No. <laughs> I hear. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, no, go ahead, General Grant. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes Look, all summer. How long does he fight it out? All summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. Until you give him a cigar. I just got mine back. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. I'll fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. Bill, there's a boy that's going places. Yes, sir. And while he's hot, we'll make him give us an imitation of George Washington. General George Washington, if you please. All right, sorry. Well, all right. While you're hot, go ahead and do it. Men, we're here we are at Valley Forge. And we've got to cross the Delaware River. We'll need a boat. So get a good boat, cause I've got to stand up all the way over. Get a good boat, cause I've got to stand up all the way over. Get a good boat, cause I've got to stand up all the way over. Get a good boat, cause I've got to stand up all the way over. Get a good boat, hey, cause hey, I've got to stand up all the way over. If you think I'm going around looking for a boat for you, you're going to drown. <laughs> I think that Frank Fay is wonderful. He must be terribly interesting. Uh-huh. I'd like to meet him. Can't we go backstage after the show? Uh-uh. That's out. I am Pancho the tough guy. The tales of my deeds are unbearable. I'm rough and tough and I'm rugged. The fact is I really am terrible. I've knocked out men or more. The wilds of the West are my rancho. I'm the type all the girls adore. I'm pleasingly plump, I will grant you. Yes, look at the ponds along Pancho. East is east and west is west, but never the train shall meet. Pancho Gee, I could go for that fay guy in a big way. You'll have to get in line, sister. Much hmm. meat. Huh? He what? May I said you'll have to get it. He may oh, 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 nothing. I I got it. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. He'll go like a bubble from acute stomach trouble, and I don't mean indigestion. No, it won't be indigestion. to the temple of the train. Got no time to fear the coyote's way. And there's never time for grumbling in the hungry and 
run of the show. And may we have many more opening nights together. <laughs> well, that's a beautiful thought, huh, Kidoy? Thank you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have a grand treat for you tonight. The management is proud to present a terrific act. In fact, the management has gone to a great expense in acquiring this act for you. They paid out $3,000 bail. So it is with great pleasure we bring to you those three great mimics, those three grand guys, the three Radio Rogues. Hey, hey, you fellas. I introduced three Radio Rogues. Where's the other guy? Where's the other guy? Yeah, where's the and other guy? You, stupid. I'll tell... Stupid? Oh, yeah, what's... Good evening, Mrs. America, Cuba, hey, Tyler, West Indies, Labrador, and all the ships to see this show, New York and Hollywood correspondent. Let's go to press flash. Buy me the high seat. Now, now, just a moment. You know you're not supposed to talk that way. Now, you're not Walter Winchell. I suppose you're not Wallace Beery either. No, I certainly am not Wallace Beery. Now, you know that. Clang, well clang, as... clang. What is that noise? This guy I here, hear. this guy here, he isn't W.C. Fields. Quite either. so, quite so. Now, 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 just a moment. Tell me, you look at a swell condition. How do you keep in such fine condition as that now? Well, I'm a little cupcake. I guess I owe it all to my setting up exercises. You're setting up exercises? Why, what kind of setting up exercises do you do? Well, you see, every morning after I've arisen, I take a stroll to the nearest bar and say, Set him up, Joe! Set him up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't get excited, gentlemen. It wouldn't do you any good. Besides, I would like to give everyone a bit of advice. Don't ever kill any of your relatives. It causes family feuds. Suiting you? Out of my way. Out of my way. Hit the road. What a character. What a character. He looks like a talent scout for a graveyard. Which reminds me, ladies and gentlemen, last night I met a dame that was so skinny, if she covered with fuzz, she'd look like a pipe cleaner. Am I burning up? Am I burning up? Looking around me, I can't believe it's here again. A ship of the Royal Navy. Decks like a barnyard. Paradise is astern, gentlemen. But before we go any further, I should like to introduce the old maestro of the ether waves without the lads. Dear, I... dear. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old mousetrap. And now my first contestant over here, young fellow. Well, here I am. Just a moment. Who are you? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, I certainly would like to know. Well, let's not get nosy, Bob. Oh, Red Skelton, eh? Not Red Skelton, but who are you? I'm a bad boy. Oh, uh, Lou Costello. Very good, Lou. Now, uh, now they tell me that you've, that you've just returned from New York. Yeah, had a swell trip back there, maestro. What a swell town that New York is, and what a tough mayor they got. Why, what's the matter with the mayor of New York? Boy, is he murder on Barless shows. Murder of Balesio, why, uh, what happens? Why, you see, he don't care what goes on. What he's interested in is what's coming off. <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It is with great pleasure I bring to you now a young lady whom... You have been all waiting to hear. That tiny little girl with a tiny little voice. Ladies and gentlemen, we Bonnie Baker. Hello, Ranger. Hello, Eddie. 
Okay, baby, give. Birthdays are happy, birthdays are sad. This is the worst one I've ever had. I've been a kid for a number of years. Now I'm at the age when you get ideas. I'm too old for roller skates, too young to make a date. I'm at an awful stage. Hither and thither, oh, I'm all in a dither. I'm just at that restless age. Too old for Santa Claus, too young to have in laws who put me in this cage. I asked my father and he said not to bother. You're just at that restless age. Awkward as an elephant, the rest of development is making me a problem child. I know what it's all about, but don't dare to let it out. And that's what drives me wild. Read every book I see, still it's a mystery. I've looked on every page. I am so nettled and I get so unsettled. I'm just at that restless age. When does all the fun commence? Why this age of innocence, this accent on the song of you? Mother says that in the spring she will tell me everything. It better be the truth. Too old to spin a top, too young to sass a cop. I'm at an awful stage. For betting on porches, carrying torches, moonlight excursions, and other diversions. I've got ambitions, but it's not to go fishing. I'm just at that restless age. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. How you can love. Oh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Heaven's above. You make my sad heart jump with joy. And when you're near, I just can't. Still a minute, I'm so old, Johnny, oh, Johnny, please tell me, dear, what makes me love you so? You're not handsome, it's true, but when I look at you, I just, oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, oh. <sighs> Dancing, do you? Well, I... Oh, that's all right. I don't mind. I'll dance with Frank. Come on, Faithy. Come on. Oscar isn't going to like this. <laughs> Let me worry about Oscar. I can handle him. <laughs> See this? Hmm, pretty. Dividend number one. You certainly work fast. <laughs> Fast for you, Faisy. I certainly enjoyed your show tonight, Mr. Fay. Oh, were you there? Yes, I was. <laughs> that gag about Mussolini slayed me. I have to laugh every time I think of it. <laughs> oh, it's one of those double laughs, you know. The men get it right away, and after they explain it, the women laugh. <laughs> By the way, who writes your stuff? Um, I do most of it myself. Maybe you two would rather be alone. Oh, pardon me. Bonnie, this is Miss Bernice. Skip it! Well, it looks like Faye's been walked out on. <laughs> See you later, Bonnie. What are you grinning about? <laughs> the gal after my own heart. Oh, she is, is she? Oh, uh, she's okay. Here's another one, Frank. The new Fay and Gilbert Spotlight Review opened last night at the Terrace Roof. Spotlight Review, which throws the spotlight on a couple of good boys. This team should go places. They don't say where you ought to go. Wait a minute. Now look, 
Let me write the jokes for the show, will you? Just read the review. Here's another. Oh, Frank! Why do you read these write-ups? <laughs> oh, you read them already. Oh, yeah. Say, Bill, what'd you do? Buy out the new state? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just bought a few papers to send to the folks back home in Rockford. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Give me that razor. No wonder you never got beyond the third chair. Oh, Bill, you're not going to try and be a barber again after those reviews, are you? <laughs> I guess once a barber, always a barber. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I ain't gonna cash any more of those $10 checks, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, wait a minute, Bill, wait. You're not still sore about that $10. Oh, no. All right, then you can shave my neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Boss busy? No, go right in. Thanks. What happened to that Pennington order? It was due in Chicago the 14th, and here it is the 16th, and it hasn't been sent yet. Well, get it out at once. I have Thornton in my office at 2.45. Yes, Mrs. Baker. Morning, Mrs. Baker. Morning, Jerry. There's a script for the broadcast. Thought you might like to check the commercials. Thanks. Hello, Mother. Sorry I missed you at breakfast. Hello, dear. Hello, Bonnie. Well, what's the matter? You two youngsters quarreling again? Oh, it's nothing. It was, it was about last night. You see, I, I was just you trying to... You certainly were. And I don't want to discuss it anymore. This looks okay, Jerry. Thanks. Well, what's on your mind? I saw Frank Fay's show last night, and, Mother, it's marvelous. And I met him at the club, and... Oh, I see. No, you don't. You don't see it all. He's very clever, and I think he'd be swell on our radio program. But our program's all right as it is. Yeah, but it can be better, can't it? After last night, some smart sponsor's gonna grab him up. I'll take it up with Jerry. Oh, Jerry, he wouldn't know an idea if it jumped up and bit him. Is that so? Yes, that's so. Well, if we're going to the broadcast, we better get started. I'm ready to leave. Well, go ahead and leave. I'll call you after the broadcast. I want you to meet him. Bye. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Hey, Bill, why don't you get a couple of suits? I did this morning. Forty and I, a half. I bought a, a, a pinstripe with two pair of pants. Oh. You mean pinstripe with two flights of stairs? Thirty-six. Yeah. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny Baker on the oh, phone. Oh, well, I should hope. Forty-three. Hello, gorgeous. Huh? Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen. Wonderful. These two guys do a good act, too. I'll say Twenty-six. So you can hide a heat. Twenty-six. Huh, darling? I'm just going on the air, Frank, and I'd like you to listen in. Huh? The Baker Bubblegum Program. It's Mother's company. Yeah, she makes it and I sell it. Forty-three. Okay, I'll take two packages. Fine. What station are you on? Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Let's see. You got one, two, three, four, twenty-six. Five, six 26. more listeners. I ought to raise your Crosley. I've got a great idea how to do that very thing. No kidding. What are you doing this afternoon? Fine. We'll be at the Penguin Club at 3. Drop in, will you? I want you to meet Mother. 32 Your and a mother. half. Your mother? Meet her? Well, honey, isn't that a little sudden? 23. After all, we've just met. <laughs> this is business. Huh? No, Mother's. Well, what do you say? Is it a date? Okay. Bye now. The Baker Bubblegum Program, starring Bonnie Baker. Singing star of the club El Sirocco with Henry King and his orchestra. Bonnie sings, well, good night now. Well, good night now. I guess it's time to go. Well, good night now. What's your next move, Frank? Billy. Radio. A lot of dough in it. That's all right by us, eh, Billy? I know they don't play that Amos and Andy often, Box Tops. 
<laughs> Say, gee, that would be swell. Then the folks back in Rockford could hear us. <laughs> See, I got a friend in Evansville. Have you ever heard me coming out of his radio? Yeah, please. Let's listen. Well, good night now. Why can't you understand? Can't you see there's something missing? It just don't seem right. Can't you tell? I'd like to. Well, good night now. Good night. Uh, Baker's bubble gum has more bubbles per stick than any other gum on the market. The special ingredient used in Baker's Bubble Gum makes it possible for a three-year-old child to blow large golden brown bubbles that really pop. So, when you put up the kiddies' lunches, don't forget to slip in a piece of Baker's Bubble Gum. Listen to it pop. And now, Henry King and his orchestra. <laughs> Bubble gum. If you don't hurry, you'll be late for your date. Well, thank you. Well, here I go. You're good little children. When Papa comes back, he's going to bring you a present. What? A stick of bubble gum. I was afraid of that. Hello, Frank. Hello, Cam. Hello, gorgeous. Mother, this is Frank Fay. Well, how do you do, Sharp? <laughs> well, what are we drinking? Two martinis, please. And your mother? Oh, silly. <laughs> you think they're both for me? <laughs> you never can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Two martinis and a bourbon highball. Yes, Mr. Fay. Well, how did you like the program? Well, you were great. But I do think it could stand a couple of laughs. You see, Mother, what did I tell you? You do? Well, yes, the way things are, I know. People want to laugh. Do you think you could put laughs in my program? Do I think? Don't be silly, Mother. Of course he could. You should see him in his show. You see, well, thanks. But really, Mrs. Baker, I think that Gilbert and I could give your program a kind of a lift. Oh, but we don't need Gilbert. I figured that you and I would work together. No, Gilbert? No, just you. Oh, I... I'm afraid I couldn't do that. You see, well, Bill and I are partners. We're a team, and more than that, we're friends, and we just clicked in the show. I'm afraid I wouldn't want to do it without him. But as Bonnie says, Mr. Fay, we don't need him. Mrs. Baker, that, that's just how it'd have to be. But uh, let's forget all about it and drink to Baker's bubble gum. <laughs> Long may it pop. Cheers. It was a lucky day for us when I got stranded in Rockford, wasn't it? Sure was, Frank. I know it was the luckiest day of my life. Even though I clipped you for that $10? Huh? Oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, let's have a toast. To us. Say, do you remember the time? The... Well, you look... You look as if you're gonna bust out crying. I don't know, Frank, it's just seeing all this breakup. We've been together all, you know, just like a happy family. It's kind of sad. Why, you old softy, get that guy. He's actually scared. <laughs> so you realize we'll all be together again next year, bigger, better, grander than ever. 
Come on, what you need is another drink. Come on. Come on, Phil. Come in. It's just, just me. I'll be ready in a minute, Oscar, honey. Well, old 10%, where do we go from here? I've got some vaudeville dates lined up for you. And that radio thing is still hot. Radio? What program is that? Oh, it's nothing, Bill. It's just penny ante. It's no spot for us. I turned it down. I think you're crazy. Well, we're doing all right. We're on top, aren't we? Yes, in New York, but this is a national hookup with national publicity. Oh, forget about radio. We'll uh, play some portable later on, but right now, Bill's got to get back to his farm. Say, Bill, you must own about half of Rockford by now. No, I, I got a little farm, about 150 acres. Poor guy. <laughs> Say, Frank, mm. uh, you know that hotel guy in Rockford you had a little trouble with? Oh, yeah. Um, Slater. No, Scudder. Scudder, yeah. The guy threw me out. Yeah. <laughs> I threw him out yesterday. I bought the hotel. No kidding? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got free lodging there from now on. Oh, you're a cinch. <laughs> what are you going to do, Frank? Uh, well, I, I guess I'll go to Florida or California for a couple of weeks. I need to rest. There's my little stick of bubble gum. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, I'm sorry I'm late. I just rushed over between shows and can't stay very long. I didn't even wait to change. <clears throat> Where's your boyfriend? Oh, he's out in the car. He didn't want to come in, so I didn't coax him. Do you want me to wake up some morning with a knife on my back? Silly. <laughs> Billy, can I talk to you a minute? Sure. You're all fixed, I take it, uh, financially, I mean? Yeah, I'm all right. I saved about everything I could. <laughs> yeah, I didn't uh, to know that Frank's practically broke. Broke? Oh, <laughs> after all the money we made, that couldn't be. You know how he throws it away. Well, he'll be around to see me for dough inside of a week. Oh, but that doesn't seem to be possible. Yeah, nevertheless, that's it. Well, he could have anything I've got. I'd have nothing if it weren't for him. But that's not the answer. Why don't you talk him into taking this radio job? It'll pay five times as much as bought it, though. Well, why did he turn it down? Because they want him, not you. Oh. And he won't split up the team no matter what happens. But that seems silly. We'll be back together as soon as the, we, the summer but we you, have... But you don't understand. This is bigger than just you and Frank as a team. This is Frank's future. It's his chance to become nationally famous. The biggest thing in show business. Oh, yeah. I see. Help me out on that, will you? Yeah. Thanks. Daisy, look what Oscar just gave me. Another dividend? Oh, Oscar, you better slow down. You'll have that young lady wearing that arm in a sling. Funny. Put on your dark glasses and get a slant at that sugar. Very pretty. <laughs> so glad you think so. Come on, Oscar. Someday I'm going to tear her blonde hair out by its black roots. Oh, sugar. Pardon me, Mr. Fay. Mr. Gilbert would like to see you in the dressing room for a minute. Oh, sure. Oh, uh, General, yes. if you please, yes. look after Bonnie. Like it back, Bonnie. I certainly will. Well, the doorman said you wanted to see me. Yeah, sit down, will you, Frank? Sure. What's on your mind? Frank, you may not like what I'm going to say. You might even get sore. I wouldn't blame you if you did. What are you talking about? Have I done something you don't like? No, you couldn't. It's me. All right. What have you done? Nothing yet. I'm going to do it now. Say, what is this, a guessing game? Come on, give me the $64 question. Frank, I want to quit. Quit what? Smoking? No. I, I want to quit show business. Quit show business? And break up the team? I guess that's it. Are you kidding? After all the hard work we've been through to get where we are, right on top, with a chance to cash in every year and make as much as we have this year? I guess it sounds crazy, but that's what I want to do. Of all the 
goofy idea. I never heard of such a thing. Maybe you're not satisfied with the 50-50 split. Yeah, maybe I'm not. To tell you the truth, Frank, I, I don't figure I need you anymore. I think I can do better without you. That's it, huh? Yeah. But I thought you said you were quitting show business. I threw that in so it wouldn't hurt your feelings. Oh, don't worry about my feelings. You'll be out of show business without me. I don't know about that. That's the thanks I get. That's what they call loyalty. You know, there is such a thing as loyalty, Bill. Don't get sore, Frank. Don't get sore, why, you big mullet head. I take you out of a jerk town, out of a barber shop, put you on Broadway with your name and lights, and you walk out on me. Then you tell me not to get sore. Listen, Frank. Go away from me or I'll punch you right in your nose. Once a barber, always a barber. What are you looking so fierce about? Oh, nothing. You still want me in that radio show of yours? You bet your life. Okay, it's a deal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Jerry Martin, welcoming you to another Baker Bubblegum program with Henry King, his piano, and his orchestra, and starring the sweethearts of the airways, Bonnie Baker and Frank Fay. Bonnie sings for her first number, The Lilac Tree. <laughs> The girl drew back in great surprise. You're a stranger, sir, said she. And I will give you just one kiss when apples grow on a lilac tree. The boy felt very sad at heart. She was the only one. The girl felt quite remorseful at the terrible wrong she had done. So bright and early on the very next morn, he was quite surprised to see his little sweetheart standing in the garden, tying apples on a lilac tree. Now that funny man who picks on the lyrics of anybody's song, the one and only Frank Fay. Thank you, Say, That's awfully nice of you. I appreciate it, too. And I don't want you to think I just tear lyrics apart promiscuously. Matter of fact, it's just to help we, the long-suffering public. Now, I realize that little Miss Baker is a great artist, and her mother makes all the gum. <laughs> <laughs> But these songwriters, those like, now that little song that she sang, she sang it beautifully, the music's all right, but just get a load of these words. Oh, uh, uh, Henry King, I wonder if you'd do me a favor, please, and put down that club of yours and go over to the piano and just play this for me. This is not to offend you, piano player over there, but it's just that Henry and I understand each other. Now, Henry, would you play this in a kind of a friendly key? <clears throat> the boy felt very sad at heart. She was the only one. Ain't that rich? She was the only one. <laughs> Women. And there's millions of them. But where are you gonna get any men? <laughs> and boys, too. There's very few of us left. <clears throat> the girl felt quite Papa, remorseful at the terrible wrong she had done. 
Can you just Who is get it? any it? woman getting remorseful over anything she's why done? Why aren't you working with him, Papa? Yeah, why aren't you working with him? Will admit she's Please, done anything. Today. Ah, uh, when you say she done so bright and early, the very next morn, he was quite surprised to see. You see that? What kind of a guy he was? A sneak. <laughs> Sneaking and watching that poor little girl that trusted him. Oh, the pity of it all. She was surprised to see his little sweetheart standing in the garden. What would she be doing? Doing nip-ups? Gee, he's good as me. Tie apples on a line lock. Now, the, when you stop to think of that, though, that's the kind of things that I hate about songs. Now, there was a poor little lilac plant that when it was planted, it had ambition. It thought that maybe someday it'd grow to be a big, swell lilac tree and have pretty lilacs growing out of it. And she comes along, cuts them off, and puts a lot of old, wormy apples on it. <laughs> Tying apples on the lilac tree. Huh? Well, Mr. Fay, hmm? you want it on the phone, sir. Thank you. Right in here. Fine, me, you. Don't be too long. Oh, hello. How are you? How's Asker? Oh, uh, he went to Chicago last night. How about dropping over to console me? No, no, <laughs> no. Oscar wouldn't like that. Okay, let's go. Oh, you go ahead. Frank and I are going for a little ride. Well, I like that. Well, you're just going to the office, aren't you? Yes. Well, what do you want me to do? Sit there and hold your hand? No. But I don't expect you to go right around with that, that ham, either. Well, don't shout. I can hear you. I'll shout if I want to. What I ought to do is paddle some sense into you. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. Now, look, look, I, I gotta go now. I got somebody waiting for me. Well, that makes two people waiting for you. I've been waiting for weeks. You didn't? Oh, why, you must be blind. You know I don't like it, and I don't like him either. Just the same, I'm going for that ride. And another thing, now that you're being so nasty about it, don't bother about our dinner date for tonight. Frank and I'll probably stop somewhere and eat. Good. I hope he chokes. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. What's the matter, sugar? Oh, nothing. Let's go, huh? Good idea. Good evening, Faye. Good evening. Well, honey, I missed your show. How'd the new number go? Oh, pretty good. Mm hmm. How do you feel? Oh, a little tired. Okay. Well, I know just the thing to order. Your favorite, a nice tall glass of lemonade. And I'll have a little short one. Lemonade? Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it isn't my little old Faisy. Oh, hello. I thought you were going to come up and see me. You said you would, remember? Did I? What's the matter? Too busy with your bubbles? Now, honey, I think you better let me get you a little drink. A nice, small Mickey. Frank, let's go. All right, honey. Pardon me. Come on, dear. Wait a minute. You ought to tell you. Take your hands off me or I'll... Oh, you'll now, fight. Now, girls, please don't fight. I'm not worth it. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on. <laughs> please, that's more than that. Now, honey, what are you doing? Oh, please. Now, you, girls. You, you get out of my way, Dave. Let me get out of here. Please, please. Come on, Come on. What's the idea? Well, you wouldn't come to see me, so I came to see you. 
Sit down, Stacy. I want to talk to you. Don't you think you've caused enough trouble for one day? Trouble? That was no trouble. That was a pleasure. How does it feel to have two girls fighting over you, Casanova? I'm just flattered to death. <laughs> now, why don't we both be smart and you go on home? Uh-uh. Not going home. Staying right here. Now, listen, kid. This has gone far enough. I'm about fed up. <laughs> nice view you got here, Faisy. Yes, and it's just as nice in your house. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, you're making a sap and a nuisance out of yourself. Oh, I'm a sap and a nuisance, am I? Yes, and that's putting it mildly. Now, you're going home. No. Now, come on, you're going no, home. No, I don't want to now go home. Now, listen to me. No, no, Freddy! Long distance. I'll say it's serious, Billy. It's going to take an awful good lawyer to get him out of it. And they cost money. Now, Frank is practically broke. Listen, get him the best lawyer in town. Never mind the money. I'll take care of that. Don't say anything to Frank about this. I'll get in touch with him later. Yeah, let me know everything that happens. <laughs> Frank, I wouldn't say you're entirely through with show business, but for the present, this big time stuff is out. I might be able to book you into some small time spots. You know, these reform societies are tough. You're telling me? Well, thanks just the same. Wait a minute, Frank. You better take this. No, no, Jake. I'm into you for enough already. Thanks just the same. Last Easter, if I say so myself, I was the talk of Fifth Avenue, you know, in the parade and everything. <laughs> I had on my little two-tone job, my suit. I had a blue coat, sort of a maroonish blue, if you know what I mean. And I had yellow corduroy trousers. <laughs> Everyone was looking. I kept bowing up and down <laughs> to people. I must have gotten a, about a buck and a half. Anyway, <laughs> but this year, this year, I am Might worried have put a guy like him to be playing a dive Don't like you know, this. this Stuff's going right over the heads. Look at him. On your Don't. pants. No plates. Maybe by Easter, no... <laughs> no pants. Uh, look, <clears throat> here we are. Now, folks, let everybody make a buck here, will it? Um, oh, yes, I want to tell you about a funny little fella that I know. I say a funny little fella is a very charming fella. Everything he does is quiet, nice, but he's comical. Never ostentatious, but he's, uh, well, he has soul that appears from out and within. The soul, folks. <clears throat> you pardon me, it's getting awfully chilly here. They're all yours and you can have them. Tough luck, pal. How about he and I getting back together again? You know, doing the old act? No, even if I could get your book and Frank wouldn't do it, I already talked to him about it. Wouldn't do it, huh? No. He still thinks you're a heel. Why didn't you let me tell him it was your money instead of mine? No. I would be real angry. You know, I gotta get going. You know, I'm broke. I mortgaged everything I had. How about those kids of yours? Couldn't you do an act with them? Hey, that's an idea. Any pies, any cakes, any pastry today I got it right here Any pies, any cakes, any pastry today It's cheap 
I got strawberry coconuts and punk. I, 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 huh? What kind of pies have you got? I, I got every kind of pies. I, today for special, I got Boston cream pie. What's that? I, huh? What's that? That's a pie. It was born in Boston. I don't know. How's it made? You make it like you make pie. It's a cake. If it's a cake, why do you call it pie? Because you, you, <laughs> that's, if you don't, if, I didn't call it, that's the name from it. If that's what you want, that's how you can ask, so you can get it. If you don't ask like that, then when you get it, it's not what you want because you didn't tell him, and he's going to bring you some mess, and you eat it, and you're full of it, and it won't even taste like it. <laughs> <laughs> You got any money to pay for this? No. Then what do you buy? Get out of here. Go on. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I <laughs> really I don't sell pies. I I I would like to mystify you with a few feats of magic. I, I've got a trick here that I know is gonna positively astound you. I have here an ordinary deck of cards. I want you to look them over and see that they are all different. Now, I'd like to have some gentleman come up here and help me do this trick, if you will. Just anyone, will you? Just come right up here. Yeah, I want you to help me out. Do a, help me do a card trick. Can I help? If you... I'm, I'm already, Professor. <laughs> Good. Just take any card you want. Anyone? Anyone. I don't care. Just show it. Show it to the audience. Can I look at it, too? Yeah, go on. Take a look. Did, did you get a good look at it? Put it back in that deck. I don't care where you put it. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is my old partner, Frank Fay. He does this trick better than I do. He's the one that did it. It's his trick. Frank, will you do it? Uh, will you? You go ahead, will you, Frank? Go on, take the cards. <laughs> All right. Step right over here, boy. <clears throat> You said now, ladies it, and gentlemen, I'm going to ask for your attention just a second. Just keep your mind concentrated. Now, young man, take a card, any card at all. It really doesn't make any difference. Don't let me see the card. Remember the card. Show the card to ladies and gentlemen.